Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Jeff Connors, Johnny. Oh, hi, Jeff. I haven't heard from what you. What are the and... chances of you making it down here to Dallas real fast like, huh? Well, I never knew you to be in a hurry, Jeff. It's a firebug, Johnny. Four fires in four weeks. Total claims to date, 95,000. Keeps up. I ain't got no job left. You just gotta get out here tonight. You're kind of rushing things, aren't you? Well, they me, Johnny. Oh, it's the firebug. Thought you'd like to be here when number five goes up. That means you gotta be in on the 10 o'clock flight. Don't tell me he works on schedule. Every Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Whoosh. What do you say, pal? I'll be there. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum present these weekly adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. That's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People find that chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow makes time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy, that good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment, and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office... Eastern Indemnity and Fire Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the punctilious firebug matter. Expense account item one, $113.20. Airfare between Hartford and Dallas, Texas. Your southwestern state's manager, Jeff Connors, met the 10 o'clock flight at Love Airport and drove me down to your offices on South Acard Street. Here they are, Johnny. Number one, candy store out northwest. Number two, two family residents on the east side. Three, small factory out on Commerce Avenue. And four, garage and repair shop out southwest. Grand total of claims is 95000 and it's all yours. These all follow the same time pattern. Huh? Every one. Comes Tuesday night around 11 o'clock, and that firebug just naturally lights up. All new policies, Jeff. Written within the past six weeks to two months. That's right. It hardly gets cold on the premium checks when it gets all hotted up again on the claims. Any connection between the policyholders? Uh, can't find one if there is. All in different businesses, different parts of the city. The whole thing just don't make sense. It does if the bug is in your own organization. Yeah, that's what Len Borchardt says. Who's Borchardt? Detective Lieutenant Arson Division. He's been working on it. Well, how's he making out? Well, I got ten men out in the field, two gals in the office here, lots of alibis to check out. It takes time. So far, there's no reason to suspect anybody. Those fires are reason enough. But, man, why'd anybody want to do anything like that? Well, when it comes to firebugs, who knows? Could have a grudge against you or the company? Or maybe you'd just like to see them flames shoot up, huh? That's as good a reason as any. Well, whatever it is, we sure got to get this boy, Johnny. If this kind of thing keeps up, I'll be losing my job, my home, my wife, and everything else I... Mm -hmm. What's the time, Johnny? It's uh, four minutes after 11. Wouldn't want to lay a little bet why this phone's ringing at this time of night, would you? Eastern Indemnity, Connors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that figured. Where did I get that address? That's, uh, wait a minute. That's 725 East Westchester. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, thanks, Lieutenant. Be seeing you. Number five? Yep. Big apartment building out in Westchester. You're sure it's one of yours? Wrote the policy on it myself four days ago. Well, let's get out there and have a look, huh? Man, 
That's sure a goner. Yeah, there's another one you can write off. You can say... Oh, oh, there's Len Borchard over there. Didn't know he'd be down here so quick. Well, let's hear what he's got to say. Yeah, sure. Hi, Lieutenant. You got down here right fast. Seem reasonable to Mr. Connors. Not that there's much I can do before she cools down. That won't be before morning. Hey. I'd like you to meet Johnny Dollar, Lieutenant, one of our investigators from the East. Johnny, this is Lieutenant Land Borchard. Glad to know you, Lieutenant. Looks like our firebug didn't waste any time showing himself off to you, Mr. Dollar. No question about it being torched. Well, like I said, I won't be able to get in there until morning. But when you figure the pattern, the way that fire roared up and took hold, no doubt in my mind. Who reported it? A fellow by the name of Hendrickson. At the second floor apartment west. Called in from a hallway telephone. What kind of a story did he give you? He didn't. Got trapped up there on the second floor, suffering third-degree burns and shock. He's not in any shape to talk to anyone. Don't know that I care to be around when he is fit to talk, though. Oh, why is that? His wife and two kids are still in that fire somewhere. Jeff Connors went back to the office to wire his preliminary report to Hartford while I stayed around to see if anything would turn up. By 1.30 a.m., the only thing we learned was that our only possible witness, Hendrickson, had died en route to the hospital. A preliminary check of the wreckage seemed to indicate that the fire had started in the basement, but it was still too hot to check into it thoroughly, so Lieutenant Borchard drove me back downtown. I'll dig into it in the morning, Dollar. I can tell you right now what I'll find. Oh, what's that, Lieutenant? There'll be four or five hot spots indicating the use of kerosene, gasoline, something like that. Amount of paraffin dripping. Sounds like a candle's use for a slow fuse. That's what we figured. Found the same drippings in all the other fires. Any idea how slow a fuse it is? Looks like an hour and a half to two hours. Gives a bug plenty of time to get away, fix himself up an alibi somewhere. Mm Mm-hmm. Connor says you think it's someone in his organization. Old pattern points that way. Haven't been able to run him down, though. Takes a lot of legwork. Uh-huh. Connors has been a big help. Cooperating right down the line. You known him long, Dollar? Oh, four or five years, off and on. He's a good man. Yeah. He doesn't seem to be letting his personal troubles interfere with his work any. What personal troubles are those? Oh, he's been pretty broke for the past six months or so. Wife's been sick. Run up a lot of doctor and hospital bills. Had to buy a new home recently. Oh, why is that? Last one burned down. Lost his eight-month-old son in that fire. Been pretty rough going for him. Yeah. Well, when we get this firebug pinned down, might help him some. Take some of the pressure off, relieve his mind, maybe. Here you are, Dollar. Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, check with me in the morning, Dollar. Think over what I've been saying. Maybe something will come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, I'll think about it. I had Borcher drop me off at your office building. I figured I'd pick up my bag and talk things over with Jeff before checking into a hotel. I let myself in with a key Jeff had given me and headed for his inner office. Well, good morning. Oh, and you. Johnny Dollar? Mean anything to you? Johnny Dollar? Oh, you're that insurance investigator Mr. Connors said was coming out from the east. That's right. Well, I'm plenty happy to hear that. You gave me a pretty bad start, Mr. Dollar. I'm sorry. I'm Sally Martin, Mr. Connors' secretary. And uh, the rest of it? Well, you mean what I'm doing up here? Well, I'm as curious as the next guy. Well, I promised to have some material ready for Mr. Connors in the morning. I left the office tonight in such a hurry I forgot it and, well... Just drop by to get it ready for him. Well, you're a pretty conscientious employee, Miss Martin. Getting out of bed at two in the morning to come down to the office for something like that. Oh, no. Wasn't that way at all. Well, what way was it? Well, I had a date this evening. Dinner, theater, and the club Romulo just down the street. Stopped up here on my way home. Mm Mm-hmm. Is uh, this the material Mr. Connors wanted ready in the morning? Yes, it is. Comprehensive fire policy on the property at 725 East Westchester. That's right. That's pretty coincidental, isn't it? What? Or maybe you didn't know that there was a fire out there tonight. A fire at the... Oh, no. 
Any idea why Mr. Connors wanted this particular policy out? I think if you have any more questions to ask, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Connors should be here to answer them personally. That sounds reasonable. And maybe we should ring in Lieutenant Borchard, too. Lieutenant Bo... Hey, Sally, what's keeping you so long? Oh, hi. Didn't know anyone else was up here with you. Well, this is Johnny Dollar, one of our investigators, Bill. Mr. Dollar, this is Bill Trendler. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Dollar. I was telling Mr. Dollar about the wonderful time we had tonight. Dinner, then the theater, and being at the Club Romulo until just a few minutes ago. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We did have a swell time. But, uh, honey, it's getting late, uh, so if you're ready, let's run along. Okay, Bill. Good night, Mr. Dollar. Glad to meet you, Dollar. Hope to see you again sometime. Being a firm believer in the ability of my subconscious to resolve any knotty problems... I checked into the Baker Hotel for the night. The bed was very comfortable, but my subconscious didn't come up with a thing. Expense account item two, $3.75. Texas-style breakfast, including steak and pan-fried potatoes. That supplied me with enough energy to walk over to City Hall and look in on Lieutenant Borchard. It was a little hit-and-run accident corner of Westchester and Gates by 9 o'clock last night, darling. It's just half a block away from where the fire was. Seems a 53 Ford stand parked down the street there suddenly took off without lights. Spun around the corner and tore the fender off another car coming up the street. You think there's some tie-in between that and the fire? Well, one of the boys in traffic thought so. After a witness gave him the license number of the Ford, he checked it through motor vehicle. Who was it registered to? Jeff Connors. Friends, no matter what kind of work you do, there are bound to be times when the job seems monotonous. You feel tense and restless, and you need something to give you a boost. Well, you'll be surprised how helpful a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum can be at times like that. You see, chewing on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a natural way to ease tension and relieve that feeling of restlessness. The easy chewing gives you satisfaction. You get a nice little lift out of it. And Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, too. Its flavor is lively, refreshing spearmint, a flavor millions enjoy. Try it and see for yourself. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum and chew a stick from time to time while you work. Chewing this delicious gum will make your job seem easier and pleasanter. It really will. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The traffic division's report of the hit-and-run accident on Westchester the night before added nothing to what Lieutenant Borchard had already told me. Jeff Connors' Ford had been parked halfway down the block. At approximately 9.05 p.m., it roared away from the curb without lights, turned the corner onto gates, smashed into the side of another car some 10 feet from the intersection, and kept right on going. There's got to be some reason for Connors being there just two hours before the fire and for taking off in such an old fire to hurry that way without lights. Well, let's get Jeff's side of the story before we jump to conclusions, Lieutenant. I don't believe much in coincidence, Mr. Dollar. Time element checks out, too. The two hours between the accident and the fire? We know those candle fuses burn an hour and a half to two hours. Leaving here at nine, gave him plenty of time to ditch the car and meet you at the airport with a pretty clean alibi. He wasn't driving a Ford when he picked you up, was he? No, it was a Plymouth Coupe. Yeah, well, that's his wife's car. Well, what have you done about getting him in? Well, he's not at home and he's not at his office. Nothing else I could do but send out a pickup on him. Uh-huh. Leave word for me at the Baker Hotel when you get him, will you? Sure thing, Mr. Dollar. I know how you're feeling about it. I'm sure sorry. (laughs) 
Expense account item three, two dollars and twenty-five cents. Cab fare out to the modern subdivision where Jeff Connors had his new home. Mrs. Connors turned out to be a sweet, nice-looking young woman whose recent illness was still apparent. I'm sorry you had the long ride out here for nothing, Mr. Dollar. Jeff's not home. He left early to get his car fixed or something. Too bad you didn't call first. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Connors. It's you I wanted to see. Yes. Well, well, I guess I knew that. It's about Jeff, isn't it? And those fires. That's right. And you've noticed it, too. Terrible things worry and sorrow can do to a man. Well, until six months ago, Jeff was the happiest man I'd ever known. And then, well, our world just fell apart. That's when your home burned, Mrs. Connors? When we lost our son. Hmm. Something happened to Jeff then. Oh, it happened to me, too. I broke down. Had to be hospitalized but with Jeff. Well, it was different. How do you mean? He bottled everything up inside of him, refused to let it come out, never even talked about it. A person can't do that, Mr. Dollar. You mentioned the recent fires, Mrs. Connors. Any particular reason why? Yes. That's what has me worried so. Ever since they started, he's become terribly depressed. I'm afraid he's going to break down under the strain. That's the only reason you mentioned them? Yes. I've tried to do everything in my power to help him. I thought perhaps if we moved away from Dallas, it might help. But he wouldn't do that. Then I tried to get him interested in sports. That brought the first encouraging sign I've had in six months. Oh, what was it, Mrs. Connors? Well, usually on Monday and Tuesday nights, Jeff brings work home with him. All the mail that's accumulated over the weekend, the new premiums and renewals and so on. Uh Uh-huh. Well, for the past five weeks, Mr. Dollar, believe it or not, Jeff has gone bowling every Tuesday night. He's become so infused about it, why, he hasn't come home before midnight on any Tuesday evening since. Now, don't you think that's encouraging, Mr. Dollar? Expense account item four, $15.75. Cab fare in and around the city of Dallas. I spent the rest of the day checking the neighborhoods where the fires had occurred, talking to policyholders, neighbors, anyone who might give me a new or different slant. I came up with nothing. Around five o'clock, I called in to Lieutenant Borchard. Still the same answer, Mr. Dollar. Haven't been able to pick up Connors yet. We checked out Sally Martin and Bill Trendler, though. Anything there? Nope. It was dinner, theater, and the club Romulo, just like they said. Yeah, I see. While there, it looked like something might have tied in. Trendler used to work for Connors, you know. Trendler was with Eastern Indemnity? Until about two months ago, yeah. Left then to start a business of his own, a bowling alley. Expense account item five, a dollar and sixty cents. Cab fare to Trendler's Bowling Emporium on East Gatto Street. Five alleys and a drink and sandwich bar. Trundler was keeping score for a couple of high school bobby soxers over on alley number three. Don't let it get you down, honey. It happens to the best of us. Pick off one of them anyway. Can I talk to you for a minute, Mr. Trundler? What? Oh, it's you. The insurance man. Uh, Johnny Dollar, isn't it? That's right. What's on your mind, Dollar? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. About the fires? Yeah. Take over for the girls, Jim. We'll be right back. Let's go in the office, Dollar. Let's have it, Dollar. You used to work for Jeff Connors at Easton. Yeah, sure. Up until two months ago. Why did you quit? I just wasn't cut out to be a good insurance salesman. So you opened this bowling alley. Anything wrong with that? Well, they tell me it takes money to open these things. I had a few bucks saved... From uh, not being a good insurance salesman? Why the interest in my finances, Dollar? Well, I'm just curious. So be curious about something else, huh? Okay. Did Jeff Connors ever come bowling here? Yeah, a couple of times. Jeff's wife says he's been bowling every Tuesday night. I wouldn't know. The last time I saw him was four weeks ago last night. Any idea where he might have been those other Tuesday nights? Why not ask Sally Martin? 
What's she got to do with it? She's his secretary. She was with him the times he came here. Maybe they figured out something better to do with their Tuesday nights. She was out with you last night. Yep. Every minute from 6 o'clock till 2.15. Dinner, theater, Club Romulo. Well, you can always walk out of the theater before the final curtain. And a $10 bill can make a nightclub waiter pretty confused about time. Be kind of hard to prove anything like that, wouldn't it, Dollar? Well, there's no law against trying. Expense account item six, one dollar and eighty cents. Cab fare back to your offices. They were closed for the night. At the Baker Hotel, I put a call into Sally Martin's apartment and got no answer. While I was trying to figure out the next move, Lieutenant Borchard called and made up my mind for me. Be out front in two minutes, Don. I'll pick you up. Where are we going, Lieutenant? Out near the viaduct over the Trinity River. What's out there? Another fire? Nope. Jeff Connor's board in 12 feet of water. Took about an hour for a mobile crane to get there and another 35 minutes before the grappling hooks got a solid hold and swung the car up onto dry land. Borchard and I were beside the car almost before the crane put it down. Well, that's a big help. Disappointed, Lieutenant? Would have helped if he'd been in the car. Costs money to drag a river like this. I don't think you'll find him down there. We've got to look. On his way back to City Hall, Borcher dropped me off at the hotel. On a hunch, I went across the street and had a little talk with the night elevator man in your office building. Well, now, let's see. Seems to me somebody went up to Eastern Indemnity since closing time. Yep, here it is. Checked in at 8.17, out again at 8.23. Sally Martin it was. Anyone with her? Come to think of it, there was. A fellow waiting outside in the car. Say, now, I'm just wondering. Could it be it was Mr. Connors himself? <laughs> Expense account item seven, six dollars and ninety cents for a fast cab ride out to Sally Martin's apartment. The extra five was for the speed. Yes, what? Mr. Dollar. Where is he, Sally? Where's who? Jeff Connors. Is he still here? Then, then you know? That he was hiding here today? Let's say I guessed. All right, where is he? I... I don't know. I... Now, look. There have been five fires and three people are dead. You're hurting my arm, Mr. Dollar. I want to know what you were doing up at the office and where Jeff went when he left here. We, we went up there to get a list of the new policies that came in today. Why? What did Jeff want with them? I don't know. Well, there was some reason. What was it? I tell you, I don't know. I got back here tonight and told him Mrs. Connors had called about the new policies. He... Made me drive right down. His wife called the office? Well, Mrs. Connors always did that. Double-checked the policies with me because of the files he kept at home. What was different about her call this time? Well, nothing. Except the day, maybe. She always called on Tuesdays. There wasn't any real reason for her to call today. Only one new policy had come in. A fire policy? Yes, on an apartment building out on the west side. Where is it? Look, Mr. Dollar, I know what you're thinking. But Jeff didn't have anything to do with those fires. Believe me. Where's the policy, Sally? Over there. On the table. Expense account item eight. Seven dollars and fifty cents. Cab fare with speed to the newly insured apartment building on the west side. I called Lieutenant Borchard from Sally's, and he was there waiting for me. You spotted him yet, Lieutenant? Yeah. Parked in Miss Martin's car back there in the alleyway. When are you going to take him? We're just waiting for you. Okay, let's go. There it is, Donna. Yeah. 
Keep your hands on the wheel, Connors. Don't worry, Lieutenant. I won't try anything. You expecting us, Jeff? No. Matter of fact, I was hoping you wouldn't show, Johnny. I wanted to handle this myself. You've been handling it that way too long, Connors. Yeah, I guess I have. I wasn't really sure till I saw the car last night. You read about the hit run in the morning papers. Is that why you dumped it in the river? It didn't make much sense, I guess. Trying to cover up that way, just getting kind of desperate. Where is she, Jeff? What? Your wife. Where is she? In the basement? Yes. She must be through by now. I was waiting for her to come out. Trying to delay it until the last minute, I guess. I'll have to get her, Connor. You... You treat her gently, won't you, Lieutenant? Don't worry. I'll treat her gently. Sally Martin's not mixed up in this, Johnny boy. She was just trying to help her boss out of a jam. Didn't even know what it was. Don't worry about it, Jeff. Doesn't make much sense, does it, Johnny? My own wife. Firebug. I suppose maybe it was our home burning. Boy, I don't know. This doesn't make much sense. She was a lovely girl, Johnny. I wish you'd know her then. She was such a lovely girl. Expense account item nine, $37.40. Hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item 10, $119.10, airfare back to Hartford. Expense account total, $309.25. Remarks? I've seen fires burn everything from blocks of tenements to a hole in a rug. But this is the first time I ever saw one actually burn the heart out of a man. I don't ever want to see it again. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, next time you chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, notice how cool and fresh it makes your mouth feel. That's because Wrigley's Spearmint Gum has lots of lively, refreshing, real spearmint flavor in every stick. The minute you sink your teeth in, that cooling flavor begins to freshen your taste and relieve that hot, dry feeling in your throat. It sweetens the breath, too. Millions of people carry Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with them wherever they go for quick, long-lasting refreshment and for real chewing enjoyment. Next time you're at the store, get some Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy its refreshing flavor and good, pleasant chewing often, every day. Remember, that's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Hal March, Barney Phillips, Gene Bates, Sam Edwards, Virginia Gregg, and Jim Nusser. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network.